Good evening, my name is Leo Silverbloom and I'll be your host for tonight. Tonight we'll talk about Dungeons and Dragons build for Amelia or Watson. Finally, it's our favorite gremlin's turn to shine. So as per usual, we'll talk about the art that I did for the video, the concept of his build, the class selection, and signature spell. Oh yeah, about that, she's not a spellcaster. I know it's a bit of a surprise, but you know, she's a normal human. So I noticed after the first World of Darkness stream that this build is accidentally similar to her, but it's unintentional with the Watoto character. So yeah, without further ado, let's investigate further. Get it? Investigate because the de de detective. I don't know if I like being associated with this. Okay, so the art. I like the simplicity of her art, and we're not as overboard with the art as the other three here, but. Simplicity can be beautiful on its own. I know it's full of gears and all, and I just need to put a sunset in the background to make Amia's unlimited blade works. <laughs> anyway, the build. Yep, she's a variant human, again, which is not surprising at all since she's the real human of the whole myth, like she's the actual human. And of course, she's a detective-ish, I, I am not sure actually. She's also a doctor and a chemist with, you know, Watson concoction. I don't know, really, but we can work with that, no problem. In fact, I can't do this without multi-classing to Artificer at all. So we talk about her race, which is of course human, and for her background, it's Investigator. Yep, I don't have to explain the reason why I choose this background for her, do I? I mean, her reason of joining is literally to investigate the weird stuff in Hololife. For the class and the subclass, we're going to pick Rogue, which is fitting since she's kinda good at FPS, right? Also, her cute gremlin toxicity lines up with archetypical Rogue pretty neatly. Also, Rogue have this inquisitive subclass that is perfect for a detective like her. In fact, I think the subclass is inspired by Sherlock Holmes and his fighting style. So yeah, it fits her even more now. More on that in the class selection later. Or, as usual, you can use the timestamp below to jump to that part. As a rogue, she'll have expertise, and we can pick the investigation and insight, and double her proficiency bonus for those skills. Also a shit ton of features, and 3 ability score improvement at level 10, which means she can get more feats than any other Holomit members in this series. Yeah. She kinda needs to compensate for her lack of spellcasting, and as a rogue, it works out surprisingly well. That's also very fitting for her, since she's the only normal human in Holomit and the rest are magical creature in humanoid form thingy, I I'm not sure. Hell, we even have a Gijinka of the abstract concept of death in there. Right, as I said before, she's a variant human and combined with the rogue archetype, she can pick up to 4 feet at level 10. And yes, in this series, we make the build for level 10 adventures. But we're only going to use 2 features and use the rest to maximize her intelligence and her wisdom, since we're going to focus on the investigator part of her lore. So obviously, intelligence and wisdom will be her main stats, with Dexterity as her very close secondary stats. Yes, you can do this kind of build as a rogue, you don't have to always focus on Dexterity first. So, if you're using point by, you should have at least 18 on Wisdom and Intelligence, and 15 or 16 on Dexterity. Granted, the rest of her stats will suffer greatly, but that's not the problem. Now, for the feature, hold on, let me put it here, there you go. The first feat we're going to talk about is the healer feat. As you can see by her stethoscope, she's supposed to be a doctor. I think, maybe, to be honest, she never used this ability other than by injecting us with Watson concoction, so I, I'm not really sure, but she's supposed to be the healer. Anyway, with this feat, she can use healer's kit, which is basically a D&D med pack, to immediately wake up an unconscious and dying ally with 1 HP but that is enough for them to run to safety and chuck a healing potion or something. She can also use it to heal her ally, and the healing is pretty nice, it's not that good, it's not that big of a deal, but it's pretty nice. 
combined with Kelly, their party will be very hard to kill or I don't know if it's even possible at all considering they have this one immortal phoenix for the tank. It is not her main role, you know, to heal, but it's nice to have a backup healer if Kelly's too busy or she's currently unavailable. The next feature is the poisoner. Hold on, let me put it here, there you go. You know what it is? Yes, Watson Concoction. So yeah, she can make a batch of poison to apply on her weapon. And if an enemy are stuck with the, with the poison, they'll be poisoned, making their movement sluggish, their attack ineffective, all that kind of stuff. Also, they'll, they'll take extra poison damage. For more flavor win, you can reflavor her throwing daggers as steel syringes. Right, we got her feet covered. I, I, I mean feet at, as in feature. Hey, remember when I did those jokes before? Yeah. Die, right? No, I just told you that I didn't like that. Anyway, let's go for the background. Here it is. Alright, for the background, we pick Infestigator. It got a nice horror option if you're in a horror campaign, but let's ignore it for now. Let's pick the normal Infestigator. With this background, you got no initial lore just like the Sage in Ina video, but at least this time they let you pick which case you're working on or what case you're working on, so yeah, that's that. For the feature, we got Official Inquiry. Let me read it to you. Hold on. Your experience at gaining access to people and places to get information you need. Through a combination of fast-talking, determination, and official-looking documentation, you can gain access to a place or an individual related to a crime you're investigating. Those who aren't involved in your investigation avoid impeding you or pass along your request. Additionally, local law enforcement has firm opinion about you, viewing you as either a nuisance or one of their own. So, your DM have that option to either make the local authority available as your resource or not. But basically, this means you can knock on someone's door in the middle of the night and not have the police called on you. Also, I have to remind you that I know it said crime on the flavor text, on the feature text, but the case can be anything like investigating an anomaly, for, for example. It doesn't have to be a crime. See? It makes so much sense now. We haven't even touched her class and we already covered all of her character aspect. I know, I know, I'm awesome. As an archetypical inquisitive, you excel at rooting out secrets and unraveling mysteries. You rely on your sharp eye for detail, but also on your finely honed ability to read the words and deeds of other creatures to determine their true intent. You excel at defeating creatures that hide among and prey upon ordinary folk. And your mastery of lore and your keen deduction make you well equipped to expose and end hidden evils. Well, this is surprisingly fits her lore pretty well, since you know she originally interested in whole life to investigate the weird creatures like talking dogs and talking ducks, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, of course, in this world, not all entities she find are benevolent or friendly. Sometimes she can even uncover false hydra lair. What's a false hydra? It's a homebrew monster. Look it up if you want. It's one hell of a fun monster. Anyway, I digress. Let's talk about the first feature, sneak attack. Hold on, let me put it, it's a long drag. There you go, sneak attack. So of course, it's a staple in Rogue build. Although it's called sneak attack, there's limitless way to trigger it. It might as well be a permanent feature. For example, if your ally is next to your enemy, the target counts as focusing on the nearest enemy and distracted, at least not focusing on you. So your attack counts as sneak attack. At level 10, the damage is 5 to 6. That's huge, plus, most likely, she got her bolt poisoned by her concoction. So yeah, she's the main damage dealer of the party. Well, second to Kiara, I guess, maybe. The next feature is the Thief's Cant. We never use this feature ever, so moving on. Alright, 
So, with this feature, she can speak in some kind of code to other rogues, but in her case, I'll change it so she can speak to fellow investigators in some kind of encrypted codes or something. And now, cunning action, which is broken as fuck. Basically, you can take dash, disengage, or hide as bonus action. This completely broke the turn mechanic and the turn count. And I love it. It is as broken as Quicken Spell and you can use it every single turn. And as you guys know, small features that can be used at will, yeah, it will add up really quick. It will add up really quickly, yeah. At level 3, you got Ear for Deceit and Eye for Detail. With Ear for Deceit, you will never roll low whenever you're trying to determine if someone's lying or not. By making any dice roll that's 7 or lower, you do an 8. With your expertise bonus, that means plus 12 on inside, and that's a minimum of 20. I know, it's broken as fuck, yeah. And I for detail will let you use perception and investigation as bonus action. I don't know why you need this, but I, I, I don't know, just try and be creative in combat, I guess, maybe? <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. Okay, now, insightful fighting. Have you seen how Sherlock Holmes fight? First. Discombobulate. Dazed. Discombobulate. Distract target. Discombobulate. Block his blind jab. Discombobulate. He analyzed his opponent and looked for weak point to finish the fight as fast as possible. So, the DD version is as one's action, you can roll inside to find a weak point on your enemy. If successful, you can use your sneak attack action without needing any advantage roll. Remember when I said that sneak attack might as well be permanent? Yeah, here's one of the reasons why. Next up is uncanny dodge. When an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack, you can half the damage. Yeah, you can cut any damage to yourself in half, once per round. I know it is broken. It's free damage negation and it's too OP. This thing will definitely add up. And evasion is just uncanny dodge for anything that needs a saving crow, so good luck hitting her. Steady Eye is our next feature. You have advantage on any perception or investigation check if you move no more than half of your speed on the same turn. You know, this is basically a permanent advantage on perception and investigation. Yeah, it is so good, I love it. She can solve anything with this feature, no question asked. Oh, also she got an extra point on expertise, so might as well put it on perception and any other skill. Right, let's move on to... She's the only non-spellcaster in Hollow Mid. I don't know what to put here to fill the time, so yeah, I guess I'll, I'll, I, um, I don't know. How to expand from level 11 onwards, I guess? You know what? We'll do that, just to fill in the time. <laughs> so, we have two paths here. One for an Artificer Multiclass, if you're going to match Chemist build, or just go on full Rogue until you're level 20. If you're going full Rogue, you can get Reliable Talent, which basically lets you take 10 on the dice for any skill checks that you have proficiency in. Even further down the line, her sense will be so keen that nothing will be able to deceit her. Even shapeshifters and illusion. In addition, she got bonus 3d6 sneak attack on level 17, totaling for 13d6, which, yeah. Going full rogue lets you double down on the investigator part and damage dealing playstyle. By going the artificer route, you can cast magic in shape of alchemical reaction and make more kind of concoction to support her allies with various effects. She can also make magical items at level 10, so yeah. This one is more of a healer slash support build and it will make use of her int more and yeah, it can be fun. But I think I like the full rogue a little bit better. Just a tiny bit, but of course, it's your choice. That's that, you can't expect me to stretch it more than this. Moving on. There you go. Another fun video for me to make. I love rogues, they're so broken and a nightmare for the DM to deal with. 
And yeah, you know, you know, you know, I love to torture my DM. And rogues are known to be the party's gremlin most of the time, so it suits her perfectly. I cannot stress that enough. I love Ami. She's my favorite Holo EN member other than Kali. Well, that's that, I guess. I have no, no more things to talk about, so good night. Brother, 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 brother.